So classified uh, paper related to the topic waves. Uh, you can use chat. You can use a screen annotation to answer this question. You can also use your mind. The distance between the center of a thin converging lens and each principal focus is five centimeter. What is meant by the term principal focus? There's a difference between a principal focus and the focal length. Principal focus is actually a point where all the parallel light rays converge. So on a principal axis. So I uh, try to learn the standard definition. It is a point on the principal axis where all the parallel light rays converge. And the principal axis, the imaginary line, which is passing through a center of the lens, we call that as a principal axis. And uh, the distance between the focus, the principal focus, and the center of the lens, this length is called focal length. So point where all the parallel light rays converge on the principal axis. Yeah, that's the point on the principal axis at which all the parallel light rays meet. That's right. So you can also, the point where all the parallel light rays meet, that's also the point, the principal axis. The lens is used as a magnifying glass to produce an image of an object. Underline the term, describe the nature of image produced by the magnifying glass. What are the characteristic of the image formed by the magnifying glass? It is enlarged or magnified. It is upright, like same way up as an object, and it is virtual as well. Real images are inverted. Enlarged or magnified, upright and virtual. The next figure, 5.1, is a full-scale drawing, uh, is a full-scale diagram of a lens and the image uh, a full scale diagram of lens and image is shown. We don't have an object. And they already mentioned the lens is used as a magnifying glass to produce an image eye. So this is a continuation. On a figure 5.1, mark both principal focuses and label each of them. So how to mark, they mentioned in the beginning that because the continuation of the question, the focus is five centimeter. So five boxes are representing one centimeter here. One, two, three, four, five. So five are representing. So if this is the center of the lens, I'll just zoom in. After marking focus, we have to draw locate the object. So we have to mark focus. So one, two, three, four, five. So this will be one centimeter, two centimeter, four, uh, like one, two, three centimeter, four centimeter, and then five. Centimeter. So this will be focus. And same way, the other, because five centimeter, five boxes are representing one centimeter. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is one centimeter. One, two, three, four, five, two centimeters, three centimeters, four centimeters. I think this point I marked incorrect. So one, two, three, four, this will be fifth. One, two, three, four, five. So this will be four centimeter and one, two, three, four, five. This will be the focus. So we have focus. Because in the question they mentioned the focus of this length is five centimeter. Now we have to locate an object. So how to locate an object? First thing, the one of the ray which passes through the center like because it's it's a virtual image is formed. How this virtual image is formed? If an object is here, we don't know right now where is an object. Example, if an object was here, first what happened? The parallel light ray passes through the focus. The parallel light ray passes through the focus. One through the center, 
will pass straight. And these two light rays will meet. Like these two light rays meet and then this will form an image. That is what happened. So we have to locate how to locate for a, if we want to work out the position of object uh, using uh, the image as a magnifying glass. So first we'll draw the light ray which is passing through the center from the image because we want to locate object here. And one through the focus of the other side. So two light rays you will draw. One through the center of the lens from the image, tip of image, another one through the focus of the other side. And what actually happened, this ray was originally how it was, it was parallel light ray. So means this ray was actually parallel. This ray was actually parallel to the, I will change the color. So this ray was actually parallel from the object. So first the parallel light ray from the object passes through the focus. One through the center will pass straight. So the position where these two light rays originate, like appear to originate, that is the position of object. So this will be the position of object. So how to locate the position of object from a magnify image or virtual image. So the simple way you will draw two lines, one from tip of image to the center of the lens and pass straight, one through the focus point, which you mark, and then the point where it is passing through a focus, just make a parallel where these two light rays will meet. That is the position of object. Is it uh, clear? How we locate the position of object in this from the imaginary or a virtual image? Anyone having a doubt or a question? So whenever the object, you have a virtual image, this is always the case that one light ray, because three type of light rays are there, one is passing through the center of the lens, will always pass straight. One is parallel, it passes through the focus. And one is through the focus, will pass straight, parallel. Drawing of the eye, it's, it's, it's important to draw because imaginary image cannot be formed by and determine the distance of object from the center of the lens. So after drawing this image, like after drawing this image, we just have to determine this distance, like just count how many boxes, like one, two, three, four, five boxes, uh, one, two, three, four, five boxes equals to one centimeter, then two centimeter, and this is about three centimeter. So object, this distance from the center of the lens is three centimeter. The next question, the speed of a sound wave in air is about 340 meter per second. The range of the wavelength but this is a wave wavelength range. Uh, if you read the question, it's a wavelength range, not the frequency range. So how to work out the wavelength range? You will use a formula. V is equals to F lambda. You can also remember this as I will solve. You'll just memorize. Otherwise, you can just work out. Like we know this. If we need the wavelength, wavelength is speed divided by frequency. So speed is 340 and 20. 340 divided by 20. So this will be 17 meter. And what about the other value? Speed divided by frequency. So speed is 340. And what about the frequency? 20,000. So 340 divided by 20,000, 0 0.017. So meter. So the range, look, the frequency range is from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. But what about the wavelength range? The wavelength range is from 0 0.017 meters to 17 meters.
So you can also memorize this, or if you don't, then you can work out the wavelength range. The working for this part is not important. It's like the range you have to write. One mark is for the minimum range and one mark is for the maximum range. But because it's a wavelength range, so the one which is like which is a higher frequency will have a shorter wavelength. Like this is a wavelength associated with 20,000 hertz. And this is a wavelength associated with 20 hertz. Because if the speed is constant, the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. Sound waves are longitudinal. Sound waves are uh, described longitudinal wave differ from transverse wave. What is the difference? Longitudinal wave, vibration. Don't forget to add the term vibration. In a longitudinal wave, the vibration are parallel. Vibration or oscillation are parallel. To direct, here you do, and for a longitudinal wave, it consists of compression and rarefaction. Transverse wave, it is crest and trough. But the most important point is the type of a vibration that in a longitudinal, the particle vibrate parallel to the direction of the wave. Where in transverse, the particle vibrate perpendicular to direction of the wave. Figure 6.1 shows a band in front of a building and a person is able to hear by which phenomena he can hear the sound produced by this band. What actually happened? Diffraction, good. Because when they produce the sound, as this sound passes, it diffracts. And that's why the person will hear. And because of a diffraction, the amplitude, the loudness of a sound will decrease as it's spread out. This is a diffraction near the gap. The drum produce a low frequency sound. Other musical instrument produce a high frequency sound. These sounds are equally loud. A young man at the side of a building hears a drum, but not the high frequency. Because uh, what actually happened, if the near the gap, high frequency, a uh, higher wavelength or longer wavelength diffract more. If you have a longer wavelength, it will have a maximum diffraction. So as a drum dimension, it is producing a low frequency. So when the drum produces a low frequency, it means it is producing a longer wavelength. And longer wavelength diffract more. That's why a person is able to record or detect the sound from the drum easily rather than the other musical instrument. Because other musical instrument, is it producing a high frequency, more vibration? So as a result of a more vibration, the, the diffraction is less. But when a drum, it has a longer wavelength, so as it has a longer wavelength, it diffracts more. That's why the person is able to detect that sound. Figure 6.1 is a full-scale diagram. So when they say full-scale diagram, it means you have to use a measurement from uh, the diagram. On a figure, mark two points uh, to each of the center of a compression and label as C. So th these are the compressions and label at C. So, so write the letter C. Only two points enough. The... the speed of a sound is 330 and measure uh, the diagram and work out the frequency. Look, one thing, because you're whenever you measure, like you mark C and C, distance between the two successive compression is a wavelength. And you, you place your scale, but your scale is in centimeters. So example, say this is coming out, say three centimeters. Uh, it can be any number. I'm just saying, say three centimeters. So you have to convert into meters to so 0 0.03 meter. And then use a formula V equals F lambda. So V divided by lambda will be equals to F. So 340 divided by 0 0.03, that will give you the frequency. But I'm not saying like the marking scheme answer may vary because this length might be five, might be seven. So any length, but don't forget to, whenever you're using a scale to measure your scale, you're measuring in centimeters. So don't forget to convert into, yeah, it should always be in meters. Because that if the speed was in centimeter, like example, say speed was in centimeter per second, then we don't have to convert. But otherwise you always have to convert the 
wavelength into meter. If the speed is in meter per second, if speed is centimeter per second, then convert, uh, don't need to convert the centimeter to meter. The wave reaches a barrier and passes through a gap. The frequency of a wave increase the uh, many times describe and explain two ways in which the diagram will with a greater frequency. So greater frequency is what will happen if you increase it because the speed is constant. So speed is constant if you increase the frequency, shorter wavelength. Shorter wavelength, look, when we have a small, like here, when we compare the loudness, when we compare the loudness, because when it is spread more, it will be less louder, like the loudness will be less. But when it's diffract less, it will be much louder. So you can mention one thing you can mention related to the diffraction pattern as we are using our, here the points. Like you can see the less diffraction and uh, because less diffraction is there because of the gap size you can compare. And even you can mention about the amplitude like the loudness of the wave when it's spread out, like example, if this was a sound wave, so if this is a sound wave, what will happen if it is diffracting, say it is 100 decibel dB is the sound produced, but because of a maximum diffraction, maybe the, here we'll have 5 dB. But if it diffract less because of the longer wavelength or a larger gap size, if you have a larger gap size, then this diffraction will reduce. So when this diffraction will reduce and if the same sound of a 100 decibel was used, same sound of 100 dB is used, so we'll hear much louder sound. So when the sound or a wave diffract less, its amplitude or the intensity will be higher. If it diffract more, the intensity will be lower. Figure 7.1 is a full scale diagram for a small nail in front of a thin converging lens. The focal length is 3 cm. A ray of a, a light passes parallel. Describe what happened to a ray at its passes. So if a ray of a light is parallel, what will happen? If a ray of a light is parallel to x, y, like if one ray is like this, what will happen to this? So it will refract and it will pass us through the principal focus. You will mention how the points, the ray parallel to the principal axis, when it passes through a lens, it will refract. And as a result of a refraction, it will pass us through the principal focus. Then on a figure, label the two focuses, principal focuses, and we have to draw an image and then explain whether it's real or virtual. So it, it's a three centimeter, uh, focal length is three centimeter. So we'll mark the points. <clears throat> so if this is uh, five boxes equals to one, so one, two, three, four, five, so this will be one, one, two, three, four, five, two, and then, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So this will be third, I guess. One, two, three, four, five. So this will be the focus. Same way. So it is obvious that this is, should be a virtual image because the object is between the focus. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one centimeter. Two centimeter. Three centimeter. So how to draw? Because the object is between the focus and the lens or image, definitely it will be a virtual image. So first a parallel light ray will pass through the focus, one through the optical center or the center of the lens will pass a straight, the two light rays will never meet. So what we have to do, we have to, using a scale, you have to produce them backward. When you produce the two light rays backward, the position or the points where the two light rays will meet, 
that is the position where the image will form and then it will be upright image so we want to draw an upright image here and magnified this is a tip so this is a image which is formed uh, the base uh, how you can it's it's fine like uh, the base it should be it should be appear that it is magnified and where we'll draw an eye so because the parallel light rays when it passes through a lens it won't convert so this will be the position of an eye the uh, width of a nail is just estimation yeah only to show it is magnified Example, if an object is like letter R, image will be, it is laterally inverted and mag magnified as well. Like left up here, sorry, uh, laterally inverted and magnified, not inverted. Um, so this will be the image, the virtual image. But if it was inverted one, then it is laterally inverted and inverted. So it will be like this. So it's important you, you draw an eye after the refraction. Then state uh, whether the image is real or a virtual. So we'll mention image is virtual because the, li the two line or the rays does not intersect when after refraction. Like here, the ray does not meet after refraction. Then the last part, uh, just a minute, that is State the name given to a lens when it is used in this way. So we call that as a magnifying glass. Magnifying glass or a magnifier. A typical, uh, state the typical value of a speed of a sound in air. So it is 330 meter per second. State a range of frequency. So this is a frequency range. And what about the wavelength range? If this, this is a frequency range. But if they ask for wavelength, uh, start with a smaller number because when we write a range, we write the lower limit first and then the upper limit. So it should be 0 0.017 to, so 0 0.017 meters to 70 meter. So when wavelength range, it's uh, it should be in meter. And when frequency, it's, it's hertz. Then a sound wave has a wavelength of 22 millimeter so as you can see, figure represent the sound waves. Use a value, calculate the frequency. So this is given in millimeter. So we, we need V equals F lambda. If we need the frequency, speed divided by uh, <clears throat> wavelength. The distance between the two successive wavefront is also called a wavelength, but that is given in millimeter. So 330 divided by 20 millimeter or divide, uh, we have to convert into meter by dividing with 1000, or you can say 22 into next power minus three. Like 22 divided by 1000 or 22 exponent minus three is the same thing because the prefix milli is refers to 10 power minus three, which is 15,000 Hertz uh, frequency or 15 kilohertz we can also write. On a figure, draw a dotted line represent a rare fraction. Look, this one is representing a compression. Here, these are wave fronts. You don't have to draw like this to represent a compression and rarefaction. That is wrong. Because here, like this region, is this whole region is representing compression. This whole region is representing compression. This whole region is representing compression. We just need a region where we'll have a rarefaction. So with a dotted line, so we just draw a dotted line. Because we just want to locate the position. We are not supposed to draw rare fractions and then compression like this. Then rare fraction and compression, no. Because the question is not draw the wave, it's a wave front. Wave front represent the identical points of the waves. So you have to draw the dotted lines between the two successive compressions to show the rare fractions.
state in terms of the molecule why uh, and a pressure what is meant by a rarefaction so rarefaction is a region in a longitudinal wave the where the particles are closer to each other and the pressure is a region in a longitudinal wave where the particle is low and the part particles are have a large spacing and the pressure is low for a rarefaction if it was a compression then it will be other way around So these are questions from the topic uh, waves.